In this quiet corner of Atlantic Canada, the pastoral views are clear, official boundaries a bit more muddy. So we're sitting on the back of my pickup truck on the Nova Scotia side of the actual no the provincial border on the riverbank of the Missaquash River. And just over here on the other side is New Brunswick. The river has been the boundary between the two provinces in this marsh since the British carved New Brunswick out of Nova Scotia in 1784 and it's been confirmed over and over again. Except for this oxbow that, where the river used to flow. There's this one piece of land though on the Nova Scotia side of the river that belongs to New Brunswick. When the border was closed last year, this five hectare marshy notch stuck out in New Brunswick's land registry system. A federal government atlas shows the boundary in the river and the land is part of Nova Scotia. A Nova Scotia website has the boundary wrapping around the property, putting it in New Brunswick. The owner lives in Nova Scotia and wouldn't speak to us, but confirmed the land is part of New Brunswick. That's where her taxes go. So how did this happen? We are here today because Mr. Patra asked about this oxbow in the river doing some research and we're now very close to the actual site where the river would have had a different routing uh, in its earlier days prior to the abato being built further downstream. So in 1948 they set up the Maritime Marshland Reclamation Act and basically what they did is they took over the maintenance of the dike system in both uh, New Brunswick and Nova Scotia. Actually, what they ended up doing is rebuilding all the dike systems. And so as a result, if the old original creek meandered a lot, sometimes what they did is cut an oxbow off so you could go straight through, and uh, that could cut the distance in that particular area about a, by about a third. So you could get much better water flow in that area. It just was more efficient to get rid of the water, to drain, to, to cut a new channel and bypass the big loop in the river. You can see where the old riverbed is and why this land was once on the New Brunswick side of the river, but isn't anymore. And, and I don't know what their thinking was way back then as to the legalities of the Nova Scotia New Brunswick land registry or whatever, but I mean, it happened and... It turns out the old channel is still the actual border. Service New Brunswick says when a natural feature like a river is a boundary, the boundary shifts with the river only if the shift is gradual and natural, like with erosion. If the river moves through artificial human engineering, the boundary stays in the same place. So we don't have to add these five hectares to the list of New Brunswick border disputes. We almost went to war with Maine in the 1830s, and we feuded with Quebec in the 1840s. We're still disputing whether this island near Grand Manan belongs to Canada or the U.S. Here on the Missaguash, ownership is not as murky as it seems, and there's barely a ripple over this curious little notch. Not so much a dispute as a point now moot. Jacques Poitras, CBC News on the Missaguash River between Nova Scotia and New Brunswick.